Hello if you're new and welcome back if you're a regular viewer of the channel. Today I'm just going to do like a bike check and overall upgrade video. Um, so let's just start, I guess. Okay, so um, if you've been following the channel you'll know that the frame is a stiff squatch. It's a Cromoly frame from a UK company called um, Stiff. Um, and it is fantastic. So um, just a quick run over of Geo. You've got a 64 degree head angle. Um, you've got 18 millimeters of bottom bracket drop. I believe the seat tube is 78 degrees and the chain stays are very short. So it's what's known as an aggressive, hardcore, hardtail steel framed mountain bike. And actually, the one thing I do have to say about it is um, my friends are always shocked how light it is. Um, I guess they go to pick up the bike, knowing it's steel, expecting it to be really heavy. It's not as heavy as you think it's going to be. Okay, good. Um, so moving on to the next element now. Um, I guess we'll jump into the fork. Okay, so the fork that I'm running is a RockShox 35 Silver R. In 130 millimeters of travel and um, the only modification I currently have to this fork is I'm running an extra firm RockShox Dominion spring in there. It is currently running the plastic rebound damper which is why there's no lockout here. Um, future plans so I do want to put a RockShox Yari motion control damper in here and I understand from a little bit of internet research that it fits, but the main issue is the top cap, right? Um, and I'm planning on using a combination of drilling out the top cap and um, a moxie, sort of epoxy, sorry, <laughs> epoxy resin, um, basically a mixture of those two things um, to keep that motion control damper in place. If you think it's weird using epoxy, um, I promise you, Part of your fork is held together with epoxy so um, it's not unusual for rock shocks uh, and it's not unusual for me um, I suppose the only other thing is I have uh, Motorex oil in this fork I'm not running the rock shocks oil um, and the Motorex oil is brilliant absolutely love it so as for the headset we're running a Cane Creek EC40 at the bottom external cup 40 which is technically um, I think they're budget brand, they do one that's more expensive, but it's a uh, seal bearing so I really don't understand um, what, the, what the more premium version can offer other than an external cup and a seal bearing, but there you go, um, Ken Creek 40 um, external cup headset on the bottom. On the top we have a Richie Comp headset, it works really well, the only issue is you can see there's a little gap here and it allows for dirt and stuff to get in there. Um, as I say, it's 100% functional. At some point, I would like a better one. If you can see here, there's a little bit of ch paint that's chipped off. That was actually chipped off during shipping. Um, bit disappointing, but I sprayed some lacquer over the top and I'm sure it's fine. Um, you can probably see here, headset spacers are Burtek headset spacers. Um, we have the maximum 30 millimeters of spacers. And a Richie top cap on the top. Uh, at some point, I do want to shave the top of this fork off, but I'm not sure um, if I want to keep this stem, and I will buy another stem before I um, shave this top fork, top of the steerer tube down a little bit more. Okay, so speaking of stems, we have the Richie Trail 45 millimeter stem, and that's actually teamed up with the Richie Trail handlebars. I believe these are 760 maybe even 750. Um, technically, if you do the old press up thing on a floor and, and measure the distance between your hands, I should be running one eight, sorry, I should be running 800 millimeter handlebars, but I find the 750 makes the bike so much more agile. In the future though, I would like to move to a riser bar. You can see that these bars have no real rise to them. And I would, oh dear. And I would love um, sort of the extra 30, 40 millimeter rise in the bars just to get the height up at the front, 
for when things get a little bit steep and off camber. Grips perspective, I am running the Ergon GA2 Fat Grips. Love them. One small modification. I came home one day and found the bar end bit to be missing. It's actually built into the grip, so it's kind of weird. So I now have the We The People BMX um, bar end on one side, um, just to stop myself uh, impaling myself, really. Okay, from a braking perspective, we've got the Magura MT Sport levers. At some point, there's definitely gonna be some changes here. I'd like to get the shift mix. Um, the Shimano Z is technically a spec IV, I believe. Um, so I can get the shift mix that will combine these into the single um, clamp, right? So I can mount this using the Magura clamp. So I'll probably do that at some point. Um, and I may look to upgrade the levers over time, um, whether that's just these uh, sort of plastic composite levers here into some metal ones or carbon one finger ones, or whether I just put some MT5 or to some MT7s on there. Um, the brakes have been great, other than the fact um, they need a bleed right now um, they're really powerful they're absolutely amazing I love these brakes and to say that they're 40 euros each you even get adjustability on where the handle is look so I can screw this in to bring these handles forwards or back amazing and then front and back we've got the Magura MT Sport calipers um, which again have been brilliant probably upgrade to four part at some point um, but you know um, I'm not I don't feel like I'm lacking braking power at any point um, so I'm not in a rush to do that break this front and back are the Dior XT ice tech rotors and 118 millimeters um, in all honesty they're probably coming up to the point they need replacing and I'll just replace them with whatever I feel like's around at the time, whether that be Magura or um, Shimano, uh, I'm not sure yet. Um, and we have titanium bolts, um, sort of no-name titanium bolts from AliExpress. At some point, I may go 200 on the front as well. I'm not sure yet. Wheel set-wise, on the front, we have a DT Swiss 350 front hub. Laced up using DT Swiss spokes to a Hope Tech Enduro rim. The internal measurement of this rim is like 27 millimeters, I believe. So it's a little bit narrow compared to most modern um, mountain bike rims. But actually that stops me getting tire slashes. So I'm okay with it actually. I'm probably not looking to go to a wider rim anytime soon. Just, you know, no plans. On the front, we have a Schwalbe Magic Mary tire. I've been shocked with how grippy this is. Um, absolutely amazing. On the rear, we have a Novatec D442SB slash B12. Um, you get the idea, rear hub, and that is laced up using DT spoke, DT Swiss spokes to a Hope Tech Enduro rim. Same width that's on the front. And on the back, I have like a four-year-old Maxxis Minion DHF. Um, actually, the bead's starting to go on it, I noticed the other day. Uh, but this tyre has served me well for at least three years. Three to four years. So, um, I'm not going to cry when it goes. Okay, so the seat is just a standard saddle of a 2018 GT Avalanche, um, which is where a lot of these parts come from. Um, so I cracked the frame at some point. Um, I am planning on going getting like a WTB saddle. Um, not there yet. Um, and also we have the Ritchie Trail um, seat post. Obviously I'd love a drop of post at some point. <laughs> Too many projects, not enough time. Um, and um, you know, hey, what? Well, what else can you say? A few weeks back, I was doing some downhill trails and actually bruised my inner thighs on the saddle. So um, I would like a dropper post at some point. It's coming. Um, you can be rest assured on that. Uh, but right now, um, I don't have it. 
So from a crank's perspective, we're still running the IXF. Um, had them for years, they refuse to die, um, so I just leave them on there. Um, that actually is teamed up with a Saint, Shimano Saint bottom bracket at the moment. Um, you have a very dirty um, Shimano 10 speed chain. Then in the back we have a 10 speed cassette, I can't remember which one it is. And we have the Shimano Z um, rear derailleur there. Well, and the clutch is currently off, so let's put that on. Lovely. Um, so yeah, Shimano Z derailleur. I might at some point get some Shimano Z um, cranks just to finish off the look. I think that would just add that finishing touch, but right now um, it's just not a priority. And then chain stay protection wise, we have um, a race face chain stay protector. Can't remember what it's called. Um, does the job though. And then pedal wise, we have new proof Horizon composite pedals. Again, do the job. I'm in no hurry to replace them, but I'm gonna replace them with some Crank Brother stamp at some point in the near future. So the plan here is to go some purple Crank Brother stamp, and hopefully that'll match sort of the purple accents that I've got on the stem. And of course, I haven't shown you yet. The bot cage is also purple. Um, I I think that's it. Is there anything I've missed? The rear axle is a Berg Tech. It comes with the frame. The front axle is a RockShox Maxxel. Um, got 135 by... Is it 135 by 10? 12 in the back? And now 148 by 12 in the back, isn't it? And then it's 110 by 12 in the front. 10, 12, something like that. Anyway, so it's 110 boost in the front, 148 boost in the back. Um, I think that's it, man. That's that's that is the bike. Um, yeah. So thanks for watching. If you made it this far, if you've got any comments or any ideas about the upgrades that I can make to this bike, please let me know. If you've got one of these yourself, I'd be interested to know what parts you're running and what you think's good and what's not. Um, if you want to get super geeky with me for a minute, um, the front fork is a forty-four millimeter offset, and the bike's designed for a 42 millimeter offset so I'm not going to cry about that the stem is 45 millimeters it's designed for 35 millimeter stem so that's maybe an improvement I can make there um, other than that um, love this bike love it right thanks for watching like and subscribe ciao